Hi, everyone, and welcome to your very first module. I am so excited that you're here, and I'm honored to be your coach on this amazing journey. For the very, very start, we've got to begin at the beginning, and that starts with you choosing the right broker. Attached to this module and in your workbook for module one, you will see 30 questions to ask your broker. And we're gonna go through those a little bit together. But please highlight or star or indicate in some way any that you have further questions about so that we can address those together. Are you ready? Here we go. Number one, is my broker going to compete against me? Depending on the size of the brokerage you choose, whether it's a large franchise or a small independent, you may wind up in a situation where your broker is actually going out and competing for business, competing for buyers, competing for listings. All, all I want you to do is ask the question, not that you want to put your new broker potentially on the defensive from the get-go, but... I have found in my experience that many times brokers who are competing against you for business actually are not super awesome at returning phone calls, bless their hearts, because their primary source of income is actually through buyers and through listings, their own closed transactions. So it's important that you just ask the question. When you sit down with your broker, are you going to be competing against me? And that's, all, you don't have to ask anything else, just leave it at that and listen for the response. Okay, number two. Is my broker going to provide a modern, state-of-the-art office space for me to meet with clients, buyers, ideally? Yes, we're gonna talk more about that initial buyer consultation in a future module. But you wanna be able to have a place where your buyer clients can come in, um, state-of-the-art television, ideally internet that works well, so that you can look at property together. You can do your initial buyer consultation, ideally at your office that is safe, that is easily located, that is um, Google map findable, Apple map findable, adequate parking, and ideally not at the corner of dark and scary, if you know what I mean. You want a beautiful place that's gonna be a reflection of your brand, who you are, that you're gonna be proud to bring your clients to. So question number two, is your broker going to provide you with that kind of office space? Number three, going back to number one, is my broker going to answer my calls in a timely manner? And ultimately, again, this is just something that you're going to ask the broker, but really the best way for you to find the answer to this is to talk to other agents in, your, in the office you're thinking about going to and asking them directly, do you get prompt responses to your calls and your texts? Because we don't want you to get bait and switched and sign up with a broker and then find out they're terrible at returning calls. That's a great due diligence question for you from the get-go to ask that before you sign on with any broker. Number four, is your new broker going to provide you a state-of-the-art proprietary technology tools that other brokerages don't have so that you've got an additional set of tools in your arsenal to offer to buyers to offer to sellers so that you can just up level your value in the marketplace that much more. Sometimes, especially with large franchises, they are going to have an entire toolkit of amazing tools for you that are hopefully not going to be terribly overwhelming for you to be able to implement, utilize, and execute. But if the answer to that question, to question number four is yes, your broker is going to provide you with all kinds of tools, your follow-up question to that is what training is gonna be available so that you can learn how to utilize those tools. We're gonna to talk about that again and again and again throughout this entire program. The best tool is ultimately the one you're gonna use. So for me, I have three, three state-of-the-art chainsaws in my garage. I don't know how to use any of them. They are tools that my husband is fabulously adept at using and he's an expert at using all of them. We have over 100 trees on our lot. He needs all three of them, fine and dandy. Social media is my jam. And my husband, even though he is a real estate licensee, is not quite as adept at utilizing those social media tools. So whether it's a chainsaw or social media tools, the best tool is the one you're going to actually use. So take the time and strategically map out a plan for learning all of the tools that are going to help you to be the most successful in your real estate career. 
Number five, is my broker going to provide free data entry into the MLS for all of my listings? One of my coaching clients and I had this conversation this morning. He works in another state. Um, he works for a very cute, small, independent company. He has almost no services at his disposal, including adding things to the MLS, which is very interesting to me, but ultimately you may decide that your perfect alignment for who you are, your values, your brand aligns with a small independent. That being said, if you don't have access to a person who's going to input um, your MLS data for you without charge, how are you gonna go about that? Um, and the broker should have answers for you on who in the office does that for you and how that is actually going to work. Number six, is your broker going to provide transaction coordination? So we don't speak English in this industry. I'm sure you've probably figured that out by now, but it's very, very important that we as real estate professionals, especially those of us who are really great at sales, love people, or sometimes we're not quite as great on the details. We need to surround ourselves with people who are gonna make us look great. You're gonna hear me say that probably a hundred times throughout the course of this whole program. As a matter of fact, you should count how many times I say that during this whole coaching program. Surround yourself with people who are going to make you look great. For me, I am not great at details and having to enter all of the transaction details into the MLS would truly zap my very reason for living. So you need to make sure you know who that person is so that all of that information can be added to the MLS accurately. Accuracy is essential in real estate, but that doesn't mean that it has to be you doing the data entry. You stay in your zone of genius. Hopefully that is sales. And if it's not yet, we're gonna help you get to that point. But make sure you've got somebody doing that data entry on the transaction coordination side. Number seven. Is your new broker going to provide you with a person to upload and syndicate to Zillow? So that has been an interesting question um, in, throughout the whole country in terms of brokerages and being able to syndicate to Zillow. Object of the game being stats that I have heard that I cannot substantiate at this moment, but that, I, that came from a reliable source are that 59% of all web-related traffic is going straight to Zillow. So we know that people are addicted to Zillow, love Zillow, and know now from their branding efforts to look to Zillow. And so you've gotta be familiar with Zillow and ideally get your listings up on Zillow so that you can expose that property to the maximum number of eyeballs. That's how you really champion your seller at the highest level is to make certain you are exposing that property to the entire world. We're definitely gonna spend a lot of time on A, how to get listings, B, how to champion your sellers, and we're also gonna spend some time on those marketing strategies and some tools and resources that you can use no matter where you live in order to make that happen. But asking your broker if you, A, have access to Zillow through your listings and B, if there's someone who's going to upload and syndicate uh, your listings is an important question for you to ask. Number eight, does the brokerage provide free professional photography or even access to professional photography for you as the listing agent? Very, very important that we make that property look and sparklingly fabulous. And in order to do that, professional photography really can up-level your photographs. That being said, many of our phones today are smartphones that we carry around in our pockets. Mine happens to be over there, but have the ability to really take beautiful pictures, especially if you have the iPhone 11 or higher. The camera is absolutely phenomenal. My husband and I were at Disney World a few weeks ago and we stood side by side and took pictures of the castle. He has a 10. I have an 11 and the pictures were remarkably better on the 11. I know a lot of realtors have asked Santa Claus for the iPhone 12 for Christmas as of the recording of this video, um, but really you can take great pictures with that, but it stands to reason you should ask your broker whether or not the broker is going to provide professional photography for your listings. So just make sure and ask. Number nine. 
Does the brokerage provide in-house property management services? Or how is property management going to be handled? Is that something that you have an interest in? Would you like to learn how to do that? And if so, is the brokerage going to allow you to do property management? Is that some, a service that the brokerage provides? Um, it's a great question to ask for sure, just so that you can get clear from the outset if this is something that you want to engage in, that you know how that works. Number 10, does the brokerage allow agents to engage in commercial real estate? I've worked for some brokerages that don't. Uh, do they have a commercial division? Do they have a training program for you as an agent if you decide you want to go in that direction? So again, even if they say no, it's not the end of the world for any of these questions, but it's about you gathering the information and making the best choice for you and the direction that you want to take your real estate career. Number 11, is my brokerage going to provide an atmosphere of high energy, high integrity, growth minded individuals so that you can surround yourself with positivity and growth minded individuals? We could literally do an hour long segment just on the power of surrounding yourself with people who are gonna make you look great. There you go, if you're counting, we're at number two now. It's so essential that you be surrounded with people who are going to uplift you, who are going to encourage growth, education, um, allow you to create a safe space for yourself to grow your career and to make mistakes. We are all going to make mistakes in this industry. Heaven only knows. I was truly a danger to myself and others when I started in this industry in 1999. <laughs> you need a safe place to go and ask questions, which is why the number one question I gave you is, is your broker going to compete against you? And question number three was, are they gonna answer your calls? Um, you need to know that you can get your questions answered. So you want a high vibe tribe of people who are gonna help you to grow, help you to succeed, and to beat the odds in this industry. Number 12, is the brokerage going to offer in-house continuing education for you, or do they offer you any kind of opportunity to continue to up-level your learning and your growth? Very important question to ask just so that you can get your finger on the pulse of what that's gonna look like for you because where I'm your coach, I'm gonna tell you, get as much education as you possibly can. Get as much education as you possibly can because it will make the difference in your confidence, which will make a difference in your competence. Lather, rinse, repeat. We'll be talking more about that all throughout. Number 13, does the brokerage provide an app for buyers or, and or sellers to be able to use, but uh, ideally, especially for buyers, to search for properties through an IDX feed? Um, is that something that they offer or is there one that they recommend that you utilize through any of their affiliate partnerships that would be free for you to use? Ideally, it's going to be co-branded. That would be really awesome. But what buyers want today is they want to be able to search for property, ideally without talking to anybody for a while until they are well into the process. So what tools is your brokerage providing for you to bring that information to the public? Number 14, does the brokerage offer any kind of technology training? And we talked about that in terms of the in-house tools that they offer, but specifically on, on technology. The technology changes so rapidly in this industry. It is absolutely crazy. And so if you've got a forward thinking brokerage that is looking to the future and helping you stay ahead of technology so that you can bring those trends to serve your buyers and your sellers at a higher level, that would be really great and very ideal. So check that out and make sure and ask that question. Number 15, what does the brokerage offer in the way of marketing? Just listed, just sold postcards. I've worked for a number of different brokerages that offered in-house graphic design. That is absolutely fantastic. If you can have access to those tools and resources without having to spend an arm and a leg to make those things happen in your business, hooray. We love free marketing and we love access to tools and resources. Number 16, who are the staff members that are going to be available on a full-time basis to help you get your questions answered and to help you up-level your knowledge? 
very important that you get to know who those individuals are and get a sense for how responsive they are, your initial meeting with some of those people, if they introduce you to them, so that you can get a sense of whether or not you are going to enjoy working with that, por that person. Number 17, and this can be a really, really big one. Pay attention to the body language of your broker when you ask this question. When I take a listing and my sign is up, what is going to happen to the leads that come in from that sign on my listings? What the answer you want is 100% of those leads are going to come directly to you. And we have a system for delivering them to you so that you can follow up on them quickly. Today's buyers want to be reached out to and communicated with very, very quickly. And we got to strike while the iron is hot, especially if they haven't met you yet and you have not cultivated a relationship with them yet. If they hum and haw and give you a bunch of weird answers and indicating that those leads that come in from your signs are being given to anyone else in the brokerage, that can be a red flag. You deserve to get all of the leads from your signs. And we're gonna talk about marketing strategies. Signs might seem super old school. They are still a huge source of new leads for you to follow up on in terms of buyers that come in that are interested in that property. Even if you've sold it already, you might be able to connect those buyers with other listed properties in the area um, and represent them as a buyer. So we don't want your leads going to anybody else. Those leads belong to you. So make sure you ask that question. Number 18. You want to ask your prospective broker what tools, what systems, what technologies exist within the brokerage that are going to help me to deliver the highest level of service to my clients. And take great notes here and then circle back to the other questions that we have encouraged you to ask about how to learn how to use all of those things and the staff that's going to be able to help you implement all of those things. It, today's brokerages are in a position where they are competing so fiercely with one another. Uh, and so you being able to dial those in very clearly, very specifically in terms of determining value in terms of what is being offered from one brokerage to the next is going to be essential to help you make the right choice. Okay, again, not every answer to all of these questions is going to be a red flag if the answer is no, but I want you to at least have a list of the questions to ask so that you can figure out and differentiate one brokerage to the next. And that leads into question number 19. Is the brokerage going to provide a single property URL or a single property website for every listing that you take? There are brokerages that do this, and I want to make sure that you at least know so that you can utilize that as a value-added proposition for every single seller that you talk to because it will get more attention. That is its own class in and of itself. And we will address that in other marketing strategies courses, but just ask the question for now. Number 20, you're going to ask your broker about signage. What does it look like? Do I have my choice in terms of signs for my listings? Am I going to have to pay for those? Uh, and just ask about signs. Because like I mentioned previously, signs may seem like they're super old school. They're still the recognized symbol for real estate for sale um, all over the country. So you wanna make sure that the sign is a great representation of you and of your brand. And you wanna make sure, frankly, that it's gonna look like a for sale sign and not be confused with somebody running for public office. So you want it to look like a real estate sign and be a great representation of who you are and your brand. Number 21, does the brokerage offer a connected upgraded account to realtor.com? We talked about Zillow and how 59% of all web-related traffic is going to Zillow and another 31% is going to realtor.com. It is a huge, huge pocket of people who are out there in the marketplace looking at this particular website. So you want to know if the brokerage offers that. And some will and some won't. Again, this is not a red flag. It's just a piece of information for you. 
Number 22, you want to ask the broker about the copy machine. It's going to sound like such a basic piece of technology, but frankly, I've worked for huge, very successful brokerages where the copy machine was always in a state of disrepair. It absolutely never worked. And that, so if you've got to drive home in order to get documents printed, that doesn't make you look very good. And it's not very professional. You want tools and technologies, even the simplest of tools and technologies that are going to work for you when you want them to work. And you also want to make sure you're not being charged. I've also worked for companies where I was charged for every copy, charged for every color copy. That's something that you want to know up front. You don't want to feel like you're being pecked to death by a duck when you look at all of the fees that you're being charged. You want to get a clear, clear picture from the beginning of everything you're getting and what you are paying for it. Number 23. Are you going to have access to a free DocuSign account? And many of the larger franchises will offer you a free DocuSign account. This will absolutely change your life in terms of your ability to get documents signed in a quick, cohesive, and very professional fashion that meets all risk management standards. So it doesn't hurt to ask. Again, not a red flag if the answer is no, but you definitely should ask. And if you get it, use it. Number 24. Some of these questions are just slightly different, but similar to other questions. And 24 is, is there going to be a highly collaborative team environment here at the office? And how often do other agents come in? If you walk in and it's absolutely a dead zone, ask about that and ask what percent of it of agents work from home and how often are team meetings held and are they held via Zoom or are they held live so that you can figure out what's going to work for your personality and if you're completely and totally zoomed out you will know that going in so that we don't have expectation problems right from the beginning. Number 25, you're going to hear me talk a lot and pretty soon about the power of education and what I call the foundational four. What you want to ask your broker is, is are we going to have any NAR designation or certification courses offered here in the office that I can take advantage of that level of learning and education? Pay attention to the way your broker responds to this question. You want a broker that's going to support you in your journey to get more education. You're here. You have already invested in yourself. You've already invested in your career. And I commend you for that. That's a Zoom clap, by the way. I commend you for investing in yourself. Absolutely essential. But you want a broker that's going to support you on that journey. So definitely ask the question. 26 leads into a couple of other different questions. Is my broker going to be loyal to me even when something goes wrong? It's very, very commonplace, especially when you're new for things to go sideways in a real estate transaction. You want a broker that's going to listen to you and be supportive of you. The saddest thing that happened was agents would come to me and say that something happened in a transaction and the other side, that broker, called their old broker and complained about them and the broker landed all over them without even getting to their side of the story. So you want a broker that's going to listen to you and is going to be calm and unruffled under pressure, ideally, and who's going to fight for you um, and when and if and when those times come because they will. Number 27, super, super important to a lot of agents who really work hard. It's their personality style to receive recognition. And we're going to talk more about personality styles as we go along. I can't wait to get to that point. But if you are the kind of person that needs a lot of recognition, you want to make sure that you are surrounded by a broker and an office environment that's going to give you that level of recognition. So ask about it. Does recognition happen for all agents? Like, do you celebrate firsts, first listing, first buyer, first closing, those kinds of things? Or is recognition just kind of the same five to 10 people every single month, month in and month out? I'm going to suggest to you that you actually visit a team meeting of a couple of different brokerages before you make a decision to sign with anyone. 
because ultimately you want to test drive a few cars before you buy one, right? You want to get the flow and the feel and figure out what feels good to you. Where do you feel welcomed? Where do you feel warmth and connection and support? Um, those will be really good indicators for you as you move forward with this very important decision. Next up, you need to ask your broker what boards of realtors they belong to and what MLSs they belong to because ultimately you need to identify the geographic area that you primarily want to work on and from as you develop your farm. We'll talk more about farming and marketing strategies. Um, and you need to know that your board is actually servicing that area so that you don't wind up signing on with a broker that doesn't even service the geographic area that you want to, to be affiliated with. So definitely ask that question. What boards, plural, does the broker belong to and what MLSs, plural, does the broker belong to so that you make sure there's total alignment there. And of course, going along with those two questions, you need to ask what the fee structure is for the boards of realtors that you want to join, as well as what the fee structure is to join any and all MLSs that you want access to. So before you start shelling out a whole bunch of money out of pocket, um, if you've got different board options in terms of your local association of realtors that you can choose to belong to, some of them are very different in terms of what they offer. Some of them offer all free continuing education except for NAR designation and certification courses. And therefore the, the dues are a little bit higher, but, and other boards choose not to do that, lower board dues, but they also don't offer that education feature. So look at all this, the tools and services that are offered by the boards in your geographical marketplace and decide which one is gonna be the best fit for you. Is my broker going to provide equity in our office even when top producers are involved? And that, that's a tough, tough one to be able to um, go in to an interview and ask that question because, again, you don't want to put the person on the defensive. But you just ask the question and then sit back and watch and read the body language and how uncomfortable they become when you answer that question. You might wind up getting some pretty good answers just from the answers that they give you or don't give you through their body language. All right, kids, last but not least, is my broker going to create fun? There is so much in this industry that is challenging, that is hard, that is not sexy. Let's just say it, um, that it's just, a, it's tremendous hard work. It is roll up your sleeves, dive in, do the work that other people aren't willing to do. As we've discussed, and we'll discuss again, the statistics for failure in this industry are off the charts, astronomical, horrifying. We are here to help you break that trend, but it's going to require doing hard work. It's going to require you doing it even when you don't feel like doing it. So you want to ask the question to your broker, what do you do to create some fun around here? Are there parties for Halloween and Thanksgiving and the holidays? And do you do fun activities together? Just ask the question, see what answers you get because you may wind up getting completely different answers, one brokerage to another. If you're anything like me and fun just speaks to your soul, you've got to surround yourself with people who are fun, with fun, engaging activities so that you can enjoy the lighter side of real estate. That, my friends, is your list of 30 questions that you're going to ask your broker. So make sure that you keep this with you, that you take it with you into your interviews and plan plenty of time in those interviews so that they can give you all the information that they're excited to share with you about how awesome they are and all the things they're gonna offer you. But make sure that you take the time to get all of these questions asked and answered. And that, my friends, is the end of this module. So please respond back to us with any specific questions that you have about this module so that we can answer them for you. And we'll see you at the next one.